Now we're going to pre-process a data set obtained in color with a DSLR camera. First, we need to add the images. We select the directory that contains the data and the script automatically searches for and classifies the images. With a color camera, we must always enable the Color Filter Array Images option. The Bayer pattern is usually identified correctly based on the image metadata, but if we encounter any problems, we can always select the color pattern manually. For images taken with a monochrome camera, we recommend using Drizzle. But for images taken with a color camera, where we have to interpolate the Bayer pattern, using Drizzle is essential because the interpolation algorithms can seriously affect the photometry of the stars. In many cases, the interpolation will completely invalidate the color calibration and measurement. For color cameras, we can also separate the pre-processing of the RGB channels. This helps to align the stars in each color filter more precisely. In some optical systems, the positions of the star centroids vary depending on wavelength, especially in telescopes with some sort of lateral chromatic aberration. In these cases, we recommend using this option. The three channels are separated, pre-processed, and aligned separately to the same image, then recombined. The end product is a color master image, as though the primary color channels had never been separated. Remember to always enable Drizzle. For color DSLR cameras without temperature control, we must always optimize the darks. But to do this, we also need to have bias frames, because to scale the dark, first we need to subtract the bias so that we're only scaling the thermal signal. We would use this same configuration for dedicated color cameras. Finally, we select the output directory, save the configuration in an icon, and run the script. With the options we selected, now in the master directory we find the masters for each channel separately with auto crop and with drizzle, and finally the recombined RGB and the master with auto crop. Here we have two different masters of the same set of images taken with a color camera. On the left we have a master light resulting from separating the RGB channels and then recombining them. And on the right, we have the master light resulting from not separating the channels. Let's compare the two results using PixelMath. If we superimpose image B onto image A, we can see the difference in the stars. In the one where we didn't separate the channels, there is some displacement of the blue channel towards the sides of the stars. We can also use WBPP to pre-process time-lapse images. We're going to select this directory and in this case we're only going to apply a darks and bias calibration without using any flats. This image series was taken with a DSLR camera with a wide-angle lens and all we want to do here is remove the hot pixels from each frame in the time-lapse. As the camera doesn't have any temperature control, we must enable the Optimize Master Dark option. And as we're going to scale the darks, we also need the bias frames. In this case, the file names don't tell us what type of image each one is, but the darks and bias frames are in specific folders called Dark and Bias, and WBPP can therefore recognize them. If all the images were in the same directory, the script wouldn't be able to classify them and would identify them all as lights. We can always use the buttons at the bottom to add images as bias, darks, or lights. For what we're trying to do here, we can uncheck all of these other pre-processing options. Finally, we need to tell the script that the images are color images.
This option is useful for time lapses because it preserves the white balance we've configured for our camera. For example, if we've selected daylight as the white balance setting for the camera, that balance will be applied to all the frames in the animation. If we want to preserve the camera's color calibration, we won't need to do any additional color calibration in the post-processing stage. In this case, we don't need to enable drizzle because we're not going to create a master light or align the stars. Finally, we select the output directory, and now we click on Run. And here is the time-lapse that we've pre-processed with WBPP.